rifle scopes. This new line features eight custom designed reticles for specific applications, as well as a full lifetime warranty on all scopes. Find out more at crimsontrace.com. Does the gun ban lobby really want to take away your guns? You bet it does, and we have the proof. It's Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and now, here's Tom. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. If you'd like to join us, it's really easy. Just call 866-TALK-GUN, or even easier, Tom, that's me, Tom Talk Gun. Pretty much open lines if you want to talk about a gun you have, a gun you're thinking about buying. Maybe you think about getting into red dots. I would love to know, do you carry, does your carry gun have a red dot sight on it? Because I, I would like to chat with you about that. I just ordered a, a pistol with a red dot sight on it. I'm going to try that for my everyday carry. We'll see how that works out. But uh, just working on that. If you have some experience with that, I would love to know. Again, 866-TALK-GUN. you got to love this story. Eric Holder, you remember former Attorney General Eric Holder, the architect of the Fast and Furious gun running program where they, the plan was, and it worked perfectly as far as they were concerned. From the beginning, the outside, the design of the, the plan was we will allow narco-terrorists, drug cartels to come to the U.S. and buy guns. We will know that this is happening because they actually, they watched it on closed circuit TV that they put into stores. They watched illegal sales going on. And then they let the guns go down to Mexico without tracking them. There was no attempt. There was no plan to track the guns. They didn't need to because the plan was to let people get murdered. And then once the guns are used in crimes in Mexico, the plan was, and people are murdered with the guns, then the Mexican authorities would say, we've tracked these guns back to the U.S. They've been purchased in the U.S. Why would... Eric Holder want to do that? Well, because this was all part of the Eric Holder, Hillary Clinton plan to get more gun control laws passed in the U.S. So they could say, see, guns in the U.S. are being used to murder people in Mexico. I mean, and this is all well documented. There's no, no mystery about it. There's not even really controversy about it. He was a gun runner. And the plan was to get people murdered with these guns. It just backfired on them when the people who got murdered turned out to be U.S. law enforcement officers, two of them. And then it all blew up. So that's Eric Holder. So now that Donald Trump is putting people on the bench, the federal benches, 187 federal judges, two on the Supreme Court. <laughs> and as I've said time and time again, this is not a, you know, an effect for four years or eight years while he's in office. This is an effect for 20, 30, or maybe even 40 years because these are lifetime appointments, right? So Eric Holder is now pushing for Supreme Court term limits. He says 18 years, that's all. And I wonder, I wonder if he would have said that for Thurgood Marshall, who was on the bench for 24 years. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that at some point. Who knows? Uh, let me at this point bring in uh, Dan Morton from MO Squared, a, a fairly new company, one that I was not familiar with. It's fairly interesting. Hey, Dan, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Tom? I'm good. Well, first of all, tell people what Ammo Squared is and how it came about. Yeah, so kind of the easiest way to explain it, it's like a 401k for ammo. Um, and it kind of started out where my wife and I basically started out of our garage in 2015 with the simple idea that I wanted to buy ammo like I funded my 401k, just a little bit at a time, over time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so... We basically, 2015, we started with one subscriber. He subscribed to 45 ACP service grade for $5 a month. And the way our service works is you basically subscribe to a caliber and a grade. So 45 is the caliber service grade would be your brass case. We'll know. Okay. It was basic practice ammo for this case. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, it'd be practice ammo. Okay. And then you just let it accumulate. And... You basically set a delivery trigger for when you're ready to receive it. So we, we call it kind of ammunition automatic or automatic ammunition would be kind of one of the ways to think about it. Or, uh, you know, people have kind of called it different things. But uh, it's, it's kind of where if you think about the ammunition market, it hasn't really changed at all from you go mm -hmm. out to the store and you buy ammo or you go online and you buy ammo. 
Okay. This is just a new way, a new approach to buy ammo. So see if I understand this. So basically I would say, okay, I want to put X number of dollars in, and I could do it, I guess, what, weekly, monthly, uh, at whatever? Yeah, both. So we, we have a lot of people that actually match their paycheck. So they'll do it every two weeks. They'll okay. Also, but the standard is monthly. So if you said, okay, I'm going to put 25 bucks in every two weeks uh, toward 9-millimeter yeah. practice ammo, at what point do I get ammo? Whenever you want. So we have it set up so that you have a delivery trigger. So what we found out early on, so originally when we started, we were kind of copying the Dollar Shave Club model of you get ammo every month. But what mm-hmm. we found out was that you've got to buy a lot every month to justify the shipping. So sure. A Dollar Shave Club with, you know, their their blades, they don't have that problem, but we, we do if we're shipping <laughs> something heavy. Yeah, you know? ammo's, ammo's heavy, man. The, the freight will kill you. Yeah, exactly. And so what we ended up doing was, you know, we gave people the option to let it accumulate for three, four months and then get a shipment. And so what we can, what we do today is we have a variety of different triggers that we call them delivery triggers. So you can get it shipped every three months, every five months, every, you know, 12 months, every 500 rounds, 1,000 rounds. It's really up to you. We have, obviously, hmm. we do it monthly. Sure. Um, we actually have quite a few customers that do it monthly, and I usually recommend at least you're putting in at least $50 or more for that to justify. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So can you specify, yeah. if you said uh, the grade, can you specify like the brand and the bullet weight and all of that? So we do have that ability for some things. So like people, uh, when I first started, I kind of ran some different surveys. And, and what I realized is that people generally don't care for, for their practice ammo, you know, your your nine millimeter 45 right. got your standards you know but for your defensive rounds your hunting rounds people do care so that's kind of where we um where we do have that ability to choose what the bullet weight is mm-hmm. um the brands we we have a system basically called ammo preferences so you can say send me you know don't don't send me winchester or i prefer federal or you know that kind of thing so okay. today with our system we basically have it where it's um it's preferences and so people will say i prefer 124 grain in my 9 millimeter practice ammo okay right. so okay. we'll when we fill a box with your 9 millimeter practice ammo we'll we'll attempt to include as much 124 grain as we can Okay, so basically, what you're really doing—it's almost like dollar cost averaging and investing. You're basically say, put let's put X number of dollars in every week or every two weeks, and then at some point, it's going to be enough to justify the shipping, and you can figure that out ahead of time. And then ammo is going to show up on my door. Yeah, exactly. We even have a uh, free delivery trigger. So at two hundred fifty dollars, it ships for free. Oh, well, that's that's really worthwhile because the shipping is, is the deal on ammo. I've yeah. got, a, I've got yeah, buddies exactly. who buy a lot of ammo, and they say, look, I won't buy any ammo that doesn't include free shipping. It's just you know, the shipping just wipes out all the savings otherwise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, then we, and that's actually our most popular trigger. And, you know, and for us, and that's a pretty good uh, balancing point because our typical customer puts in about 40 to $50 a month, and so it'll be about, you know, five or six months, and they'll get a big box of, of ammo that they'll – They'll include with their other ammo. We're not the only source for most people. But, right. Um, yeah. Now, and obviously, this is a way that you could get ammo to shoot, but also it'd be a way that you could say, look, I just want to start stocking up on a regular basis. It, like, as you say, look at it as a an ammunition savings account. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's called Ammo yeah, Squared, and- AmmoSquared.com. And you got yep, like referral friend out. programs and ammo giveaways. I'm looking at the website here. You got all kinds of stuff going on here. So yeah, that's pretty so cool. So a couple of things I want to mention. So sure. we, we did uh, create a coupon code for you guys, Gun yep. Talk. So if anybody signs up with that, they'll get free shipping um, on any size order. So they don't have to wait for the 250. Um, so they can just try it out. Uh, give them a give them a chance to to see how it works. Okay, um, and, and the code is just Gun Talk. Yep, just gun talk, no space. Okay. And then when they check out, they can try that out. Super. Um, okay. We and then appreciate the that. Other thing, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that, um, you know, kind of building a business in the ammo industry has been a lesson in frustration. And you guys talk about this all the time, is that you've got this discrimination from, you know, 
Silicon Valley companies, right? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all those guys are getting, yeah. you know, dinged. Well, when you're building a business, it's actually harder because you can't market, right? So we can't go through Facebook or Instagram. Right. And we can't use a lot of the financial companies that you would normally think of if you're going to build a business. We can't use Stripe. We can't use uh, Square. I tried getting a loan from, like, Quicken Loans. No, nah, because we're in the ammo industry. Forget right. it. Right. Um, we actually got kicked off of Stripe. We started using Stripe. After we hit about 10000 a month in subscriber, they, we must have got on the radar, and they said, you guys have to move all your accounts to somewhere else. Wow. So, yeah, and, and I think it's a topic that just isn't really being discussed because, you know, you only kind of see it from, from a business owner's perspective. Right. The consumers, I mean, they see the, they see the, the YouTube and, and those guys getting, um, you know, De- demonetized over there. Demonetize exactly. Um, there was a, uh, you probably know about this, there was um, a thing in the Obama administration called Operation Choke Point. Oh, sure. We talked uh, about that a lot. In, yeah, with a, basically, you know, shutting off gun companies and, and from financial resources. So, the, kind of the, kind of what I'm leading up to here is that as we're kind of building this business, one thing that we've, we've done is we're, we're trying to, grow, right? Any small business is trying to grow. And so we actually have a, a stock offering. We've put out a, um, hmm. it's an equity crowdfund on a site called WeFunder, which is sort of like a Kickstarter, but instead you actually get stock in the company. Uh-huh. And so it's kind of a neat way to, you know, support a kind of a growing two-way company. Sure. And we have this, I guess the, the vision here is um, kind of, you, you, if, you, if your listeners go to that page, they could see it. It's, um, it's to kind of basically create an ammo stock exchange. Okay. So and, and, and I've we, got a scoot. So if you could just kind of put a cap on it, because i got to run to the break here. Oh, okay. So, uh, so yeah. uh, they go to uh, WeFunder and look, uh, and look for ammo square we there? Funder, yeah, WeFunder.com slash ammo square is our okay. um, limited stock offering. There you go. And ammo squared.com. If they want to go take advantage of that uh, coupon, coupon being Gun Talk. Dan, thank you so much. Keep us posted on how the uh, company progresses, okay? Yeah, you bet. Thanks. All right. You, you bet. Thank you so much. All right. Open lines now 866 Talk Gun. We'll get you in here. What are you carrying? What are you buying? Ooh, you think about selling anything? You never know. I might be in the market. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but you never know. 866-TALK-GUN. When someone leaves you their gun collection, you may want a few, but what do you do with the rest? How do you sell them? Who do you call? Well, I call Johnny Dury at Dury's Guns. Whether you're selling one gun or 500, they'll tell you what it's worth and write you a check. Simple, quick, easy, fair. I trust Dury's Guns. Give them a call. Dury'sGuns.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But do you know you could use more training? Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Here, uh, headline, Idaho Fishing Game Approves Year-Round Wolf Hunts After Weighing 
more than 27,000 comments. Very interesting. Uh, let's see, following a two-week public comment period, uh, they got 27,000 responses. The commission approved seven hunting proposals and two trapping proposals. Uh, allows wolf hunting from August 1 to June 30 across much of the state and year-round wolf hunting in parts of the state. Very interesting. I guess I'll have to start carrying my rifle everywhere I go. I don't always have my rifle with me, but probably ought to have one close by. I mean, I always have a, my handgun with, him, with me, of course, but if you get a, a, an opportunity at a wolf at 200 plus yards, I don't think my pistol, I mean, it can do it, but I'm not sure I can do that. So, and why would you shoot a wolf? Yes. Uh, the area, I have a little cabin in Idaho. We had in one winter, I think it was 32, or actually summer or winter, uh, 32 cows killed by wolves just in our local area close by uh, we have also have a lot of mountain lions too but we have uh, wolves as well so and I, it would be quite the I mean first of all it's ecologically okay we have more wolves than we know what to do with they are really seriously decimating the elk populations in some areas I mean like really are not not one of those urban legend things. It's pretty well documented at this point. We have too many wolves. Actually, much of the West has too many wolves. It's one of those, a, a good idea went way too far where we're gonna reintroduce. In this case, they didn't actually reintroduce. What they did is they brought in different wolves. They brought in the gray wolves instead of the timber wolves, different species or subspecies. Bigger, like a lot bigger. I mean, we're talking 150 pound wolves, uh, really something. What, hmm, 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 what would be a good caliber? I know almost anything would work, uh, but I probably, I'm not even sure. If I used a 223, I think I would want to be particular about the ammunition because you're shooting a big critter that can take a lot. I mean, I actually think about it, that's heavier than a lot of deer, certainly heavier than a number of white-tailed deer that are shot. So 223 could work. I would probably lean more toward something just a little bit heavier. 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5s in that range. Maybe that uh, 280 that I just got. I finally got the rings for that. Uh, let's see, they come in Thursday. Haven't had a chance to put them on yet. So I've got the rings, I got the scope, got the rifle. I don't have any 280 actually improved ammo yet working on getting that, but I do have a lot of 280 ammo. So I can start by shooting the 280 ammo in this rifle, and then the brass will fire form to the shape of the 280 actually improved with the 40 degree shoulder. So then I will be able to use that brass for reloading. So kind of working on that. Uh, you know, a lot of things going on, but you know, if it's not complicated, why do it, right? I mean, we wouldn't do reloading and we wouldn't do a lot of this stuff if we couldn't really get into the esoteric of it. I call it going full gun geek. And yeah, it's fun. We do that stuff. Hey, let's go talk to Russell out of Wichita, Kansas on line five. Hey, Russell, you're on Gun Talk. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, in order to understand the, the Second Amendment, that we need to understand how the people back in 1776 respected the Bible and that when Jesus said, sell your garment and buy a sword, he was not talking about forming a militia, for it, especially in the days of the Roman Empire, because Jesus himself paid taxes to Rome. Hmm. So this was for pure self-defense. Makes sense. I'm sorry, go no ahead. no way that the, that the people of the Constitution would have done anything deliberately against the Bible. Well, that's a good point. And now, of course, now people don't have to wonder anymore. We have a good uh, Supreme Court decision, the uh, Heller decision, where Justice Scalia wrote that. And he specifically said that the Second Amendment is not related to, you don't have to be in a militia, or in this case, the National Guard, which some people like to say. It is an individual right because it, the term the people is used, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So that whole militia thing is, is not really part of it. And now we recognize, it, it goes back to what you said. You're absolutely right. The Second Amendment, yes, it is about having the means to control tyranny. 
if the government gets completely out of control, but it's also for personal self-defense. And so that is a legitimate reason for owning a gun and a legitimate reason for us to have the Second Amendment. Thank you, Russell. I hadn't uh, put it in exactly those terms, biblical terms, but that's a good way to look at it. Thank you, sir. Let's see here. Uh, yes, we can get Skip in here. Uh, line four out of Vermont. Hey, Skip, you're on Gun Talk. Yes. Uh, 1964, I bought a Model 722 257 Remington Roberts. Nice. Which, which is a talp loader. I used it for a few years. In 1968, I bought a Model 788 Remington 308. And I got looking at things, being a tool die engage maker and an engineer, yeah. <laughs> which I'm retired now. Um, I milled out the uh, floor plate, and I used the same L-shaped piece that holds the clip in. And I, uh, being that the 788 also made a 6-millimeter clip, Right. I used a six millimeter clip and it worked perfect. <laughs> so you used a magazine from a seven eighty eight in a model seven? In model seven twenty two. Oh okay, so in the seven twenty two. Well that's pretty cool. Yeah, that old seven eighty eight that had that magazine that stuck out below it, it was uglier than sin, but it worked really well. I had a couple of those. Yeah, so, uh, I uh, uh I see that looked at the was a seven eighty eight and I said, Darn, I don't see any reason why I can't uh you know, manufacture an L-shaped clip rather than buying one. Being I was a machinist, I I made the L-shaped clip <laughs> and I put it in there and uh, used the six millimeter clip for the uh, 257 because the six millimeter and 257 are about the same length shell. That's pretty cool. Well, congrats. That, that's that's ingenious. I don't have those skills, but I'm glad there are people like you that do. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, I had a 788. I loaned a guy so he his son could take it out on his first hunt. Never could get it back from him. Finally, I pushed the issue. Finally got the gun back. He had cut two inches off the stock of the gun that I loaned him. That's why he wouldn't bring it back, because he knew I wouldn't be happy. Can you believe? I mean, it's hard to even imagine it. You load somebody your gun, and they cut the stock off, and then they don't even want to bring it back. Crazy stuff. 866-TALK-GUN. I guess it takes all kinds. What's so hard to understand about shall not be infringed? Here's Tom. All right, back with you. Interesting, had a caller, didn't want to be on, but uh, had a thought. We had a caller earlier who was going to be taking a local reporter out to the range, TV reporter. And this guy says he's worked in the press for many years. Uh, he said, you know, he would suggest to the caller, when you're working with the media, have someone else there to film the event for protection use this for training purposes, but also will keep the media honest and not twist anything around. I am reminded of the Katie Couric interview with the Virginia Citizens Defense League folks, the VCDL, where the editors of the Katie Couric piece edited it and lied, inserted things that weren't there, inserted pauses that weren't there, did it in a way to make the VCDL people look as though they were either clueless or complicit or just wrong. The good news is somebody from VCDL was smart enough to have an audio recorder running the whole time. And they published after Katie Couric's phonied up piece ran, they put out online the audio recording and you could see what the editors did to the piece. And as a result of that, they apologized. But unfortunately, the the edited phony piece still runs and still out there, but it is a good idea. It's not a, you know, you could either have somebody else videoing it, or you could at the very least have audio running in your pocket with your phone the whole time. Just, just kind of a thought, uh, you know, it's um, ways to do that. And you could call it paranoid. I would call it being realistic because we've seen what happens out there. So just kind of a, Kind of a thought. Let's scoot over to uh, Jim. He's in Palmer, Alaska on one. Hey, Jim, thanks for the call. You're on, man. Hey, Tom. Uh, I don't remember the name of the lady that you talked to first off about the uh, trying to get shooting facilities in the city of oh, Chicago. Oh, Rhonda Ezel, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. out here in uh, Palmer, Alaska, i.e. the Matanuskas who sit in a borough, we've got pretty much the same thing going on. Really? And uh, it's they are trying to limit 
the amount of shooting facilities that we have. It says this resolution was in response to public concerns over the safety and land use cap- compatibility of shooting facilities. So <clears throat> I'm thinking this sounds Doomberg to me being funded uh, is, anyway. Where is this a thing that's been introduced? Has it been passed? Where, where, it, where are you with this? Okay, so the borough assembly just passed it on uh, February 18th. Now it is going to go to the borough planning commission and there is going to be a public meeting on March 16th, 2020. They don't have a time listed yet, but it was kind of interesting. I got into the uh, the Matanuska sit, sit in a borough on my uh, laptop and, uh, you know, got the information and all that stuff. Well, evidently they can change stuff as they go along because uh, when I first got in there, it was January 25th. Well, then all of a sudden this uh, assembly meeting uh, pops up in, in here too. Um, so anyway, uh, it's uh, the, here's the kicker. One of the sentences uh, talking about what the the uh, what the thing would do, mm-hmm. existing shooting ranges will not be affected by this ordinance unless they are expanded. So, so you could not expand your range right. uh, under this, and you couldn't build new ranges under That's this. That's exactly the way it's uh, being interpreted. Yes. Okay, so right now it's gone through the Matsu Borough and it's headed toward the planning and zoning. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and, so uh, March sixteenth, the planning and zoning. Uh, so who is on this uh, from the pro gun side of things? Well, it was. It's difficult to say. I mean, there is a fellow who is a gun shop owner, and but they had a big meeting on January thirty first because that was the last day for a uh, comment. Mm-hmm. So uh, several hundred people showed up there, and it was right at the borough building. Mm-hmm. Uh, we even went inside to warm up. You know, people were carrying guns and stuff like that. They didn't have a problem with that. But evidently, um, it, it, a friend of mine called me up, and he said, hey, I saw this thing on Facebook, and he told me about it. I said, what? Facebook? What the heck is that? So they uh, they weren't real public about their notices. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm look. I'm trying to do a little bit of search while we're talking here to find out sure. if Alaska has uh, preemption laws where only the state can pass gun laws. Alaska mm. state preemption, yeah, let's see. Do, 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 do. Law restricts uh, any political subdivision of the state's ability to create firearms restrictions on their own. Uh, so this regulation may be in violation or in conflict with the state preemption law in Alaska that pro- prohibits local jurisdictions from passing gun laws. Wow. Okay. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to get that out. People need to uh, go to the Matt News who sit in the borough's uh, online location and uh, click into it and because eventually they're going to have to say what time this meeting is on the March 16th. But, I, you know, a lot of people better show up. Yeah, you got to get your state group involved, and a lot of people have to show up. So go to the Matanuska Susitna Borough website. You can find it if you live up there. It shouldn't be easy. Right. The Matsu Valley there, uh, where we grow great big vegetables. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so very good. I appreciate the heads up. That's the kind of alert that we need to know where people share this information and get the word out. And now everybody has to get involved and stop this because basically this has the ability or the potential at least for stopping anybody from building shooting ranges or from expanding existing shooting ranges. So Jim, thank you so much. I very much appreciate the heads up on this. Okay. All right. There you go. 866-TALK-GUN. Uh, we have room for you. Brian, don't go anywhere. We're going to get you in here, but we're open lines. If you've been doing a little hunting, shooting, or maybe gun buying, or what are you carrying? Think about that as well. Um, when you carry, do you carry? I don't, actually, some people don't carry an extra magazine, and I'm curious as to why. Uh, and if you do, well, how many do you carry? <laughs> Anything else you carry when you're doing your EDC? Love to know. 866 Talk Gun.
For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications with the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience, whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime. Setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Back with you, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. Let's see. Uh, from Mike, sends in a note. Uh, can't get through on the co- phone, <laughs> so here's a question um, and a comment. He says, I'd like to know your thoughts about the 327 Federal Magnum. Oh, gee, dude, if only we had somebody around here who could talk about that. <laughs> uh, as a self-defense round, actually, the 327 Federal Magnum is a great self-defense round. I know people go, well, it's not, you know, it's 32 caliber. Yeah, but let's look at the energy. It has the same energy as a 357 Magnum. And is there anybody who wouldn't agree that a 357 Magnum is a good self defense round? The, the beauty of the 327 is you can use a lot of different ammo 32 Smith and Wesson Long and some other things, 32 HRs. Uh, so you can shoot really light loads, but then you can stoke it up with a full power 327 Federal loads. And now it's a truly great self-defense load. So that, it's a really good good one for that. Let's see. He says also, he says, I agree that ARs need to be sufficiently lubed to run correctly, but I hate, in all caps, a dripping firearm. So I found an alternative. I now use an engine assembly lube from either Permatex or Luber Plate, number 105 Motor Assembly Grease. These both work wonders to lube an AR, and they do not drip oil everywhere. Great products both. Thanks for your time. Uh, I hope you to catch your answer on my 327 question on the radio program. Well, there you go. I gave you the answer, and thank you for your input on grease for the AR. There you go. All right. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Brian's on two out of Reno, Nevada. Hey, Brian, you're on, sir. Hey, thanks, Tom. There's a couple things I called you about. One, uh, it's just a heads up. My wife and I got her a new um, pistol in January. It's a Smith & Wesson uh, M&P Shield. It's a 380 EZ. Okay. Great pistol. But um, after about three weeks of shooting, she started having problems with the magazine not feeding rounds about the uh, sixth or seventh round hmm. on both mags. So I took them apart, and both magazines had rust on the springs right about where the sixth or seventh round would be. So um, it's just, uh, again, just a heads up to people if they're having problems. Huh. Uh, it might be worth checking that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, not like you're, it's, it's, not like, it's not like you're in a real humid area in Reno, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of a desert, so it's, yeah. it's really kind of surprising. And I, let, let me ask you a question because I'm trying to figure this one out. By any chance, does she carry is a like, concealed carry? Not yet. She's working on that. Okay, because, I mean, I've had guns rust when I carry them, but just from the sweat and everything from just carrying it yes. and having it close to me. So this one is basically sitting in the desert out there in that dry air, and the magazine springs have rusted. Right. Or, you know what, it's even possible that they, well, it's most likely they were already starting to rust, um, and I just didn't catch it, you know, the first week there. Ah. Because there's, not, there's no other environmental issue that would have started that rust going. Um Again, in the middle of a desert. So I just thought I would, oh, um, 
I did contact Smith and Watson, um, and they are going to ship me a couple new springs. Oh, good. Uh, so th- there is that, yeah. And it's a great pistol, especially for ladies. She loves it. Oh, yeah. Um, red dot carry. Tom, I, uh, yeah, I've been carrying a, a red dot on my pistol for about five or six years now. Hmm. Okay. You, you asked about that. Yeah. Um, I got it because my uh, as I got older, I started having trouble uh, focusing on the front sight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I really, really like it. Uh, but if you just got it, Tom, like anything else, it's going to take uh, several hundred uh, repetitions with yes. that pistol before you start uh, picking it up automatically. It's co-witness with my front sight blade. Um, and, you know, I've got... Bad breath distance. I'm not looking at that anyway. Sure. But uh, you know, beyond about you know three yards or so out on out, um, I do pick it up, and it's it's really really nice. So well, I'm looking like forward it. to it. I, I know I'm knowing I'm going to like it. Look, I appreciate that. I appreciate the uh, the advice on that. Thank you, sir. I do want to scoot down to line three. Neil's with us out of Big Lake, Alaska. He's got a follow up for that previous call. Neil, thank you for calling in. Oh, thanks, Tom. How you doing today? I'm good. Go ahead. Well, I, I've been fighting that battle with the borough for about seven years now about the, um, the shooting ranges, gun ranges up here. Uh huh. And what they're af- after right now, you know, this started between two neighbors that there's a prominent retired judge up here who had a guy buy a piece of land next door to hers. And he starts shooting his firearms on it. Mm-hmm. And she didn't like that. So she went to the borough and she said, you know, you got to stop him. Well, the borough doesn't have the, the authority to stop him because of that state law that you quoted. Okay. They can't, they can't stop anybody from shooting on their property as long as it's safe. Right. So what they're doing now, they instead of just say, actually... The previous assembly member a couple of years ago, they, that's what it came down to. We have no authority, so we'll drop it. Well, they brought it back up again with the current assembly. Mm-hmm. And the current assembly decided in their infinite wisdom that they knew everything about gun ranges and everything about guns and that they needed to restrict firearms usage in the valley, to put it bluntly. Right. Um, if, if you don't have a place to shoot your gun, then there's no point in having a gun. You know, it's just a museum piece that you can't so, shoot. It. So who's fighting this? I mean, do you have a local chapter? Uh, do you have NRA affiliates or anybody working uh, on this? The NRA hasn't gotten too involved. We have a local group form. The gentleman that called earlier from Palmer, he says something about a guy that owns a gun shop here. Mm-hmm. He calls it 907 Freedom. It's a Facebook page. You can get on it. Um, you can actually see the whole assembly meeting. We just had this. It, there was uh, over 100 people showed up last Tuesday night, the 18th, and overwhelmingly told them, you know, why don't you just shelve this? That, right. was, the, that was what the hearing was about. There was a, one of the assembly members that proposed an ordinance to just throw this basically out the window. Yeah, it's and you know, and, I'm, and look, I, I hate to do it, but we're out of time on this segment. I've got to scoot, but I, I appreciate the heads up. I'm going to look into this and see what, if anything, that we might be able to help with uh, with some of our contacts, uh, because this is the kind of thing you need. Just it's so much easier to get it stopped and keep, prevent them from passing it than it is to come back in and go to court and sue them uh, and tell them, no, you do not have the ability to do this, you don't have to, and so you don't have the power. So we'll try to get that done. But if anybody else has some info on that, let me know. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Gun Talk. All right, for those folks uh, up in Alaska, following up on two calls you've had about what's going on in the Matsu Valley, an effort to shut down uh, the building of shooting ranges or expanding shooting ranges there, there is, I just found it, a Facebook group, Alaska Gun Rights, uh, at Alaska Gun Owners. Uh, You can find that. Let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, uh, it's uh, facebook.com slash Alaska Gun Owners. 
uh, facebook.com slash Alaska Gun Owners, and they're sharing information about the meetings and what's going on there. You need to get involved. Don't you know? I know people think it's Alaska. What, what are they going to do here? They're going to do whatever they want to do. Well, no, take it back. They will do whatever you let them get away with. All right. Line four, Mike's with us. Atlanta, George, what you looking for here, Mike? Oh, hey, Tom. I can still carry just about everywhere that I can that it's legal. And I need a good system to carry my Ruger EC9 when I'm jogging. And I, I've got a good holster for it, but I don't like carrying it on my hip or in my pocket because it bounces around. I got an idea. Yeah, belly band. Uh, big elastic belly band that goes all the way around. It's elastic, and they, they make them with pouches for guns. They're specifically set up for carry. It'll go under whatever shirt you're wearing. A lot of joggers use belly bands. Have you ever looked, seen one of those? No, I haven't. Is that the company's name, belly band? No, you just put in belly band in a search. Uh, Galco has them. Other companies have them. Um, but several different companies make belly bands. They really are like a six or eight inch wide piece of elastic that goes around Velcros, but it has pockets sewn in so you can have the gun and you could have an extra mag in there. And it holds it tight against you. It's not flopping around when you're jogging. And then, but a loose shirt over it, it makes it disappear. So it's a really good way to go. You know, and here's the deal. I mean, I know you know this, you're in Atlanta. Uh, when you jog, your gun's gonna get wet and sweaty and you're gonna have to take it apart and really clean it and pre prevent rust. Cause Everything rusts once you start sweating all over it. Good. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank you for the call. Lon is on five out of uh, Arizona. Hey, Lon, you're up, and we've got about a minute and a half. Go for it. Last week was my first Second Amendment uh, rally in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. The numbers ranged about 3,000. Wow. And then Sunday... I was able to attend Alan Gottlieb's Second Amendment Foundation town hall meeting. Yeah. I got two, two for last weekend. You did. So what motivated you to go to those? I just had to go. It's time. The Se it, Second Amendment rally in Virginia. Yep. It's time. I think Virginia has motivated a lot of people. And, they, and in states like Arizona where you'd think, well, traditionally, you know, we don't have any problems here. And then you realize, well, that's what they thought in Virginia, too. And oh, they're, we have, coming, they're coming they're, for they're, our guns here. They're coming hard there. And I'll tell you, Martha McSally needs every bit of help she can get. Anybody who can throw 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 100 bucks into the kitty or can volunteer, uh, we've got to keep her in the Senate. We've got to keep control of the Senate for Donald Trump. I'm, I'm, I think Trump's going to get reelected, and we've got to keep the Senate for him so we can get the judges. But Arizona is a key area. Bloomberg just said he's going to put... Uh, I think it was eight million dollars into that particular race, maybe more. It's it's a it's a bunch of money. So there you go. Look, I appreciate the call. Congratulations on uh, being woke, as they say these days. Getting to gun rights rallies. I encourage everybody to do that as part of their 20 and 2020 campaign. All right. So here's the call. We're going to be doing the after show in just a second. We'd love to have you join us. Give me a call right now. You could be a part of that if you ever heard it. You know. It's kind of crazy town. We go a little off the rails. Uh, give me a call, 866-TALK-GUN. That will get you in here. Uh, tell me about a gun that you have that you wish you hadn't sold or one you're thinking about buying or maybe the gun you hate the most. Oh, there you go. 866-TALK-GUN. In the meantime, make a commitment. 20 and 2020. I need 20 minutes from each of us every day for the Second Amendment in this year whether it's calling, writing, emailing, or showing up or volunteering. If we do that, we win. This is our year. Has to be. 